So, uh, Peter, which nutrients would you recommend for which ailments? Well, that's a great that's a great thing to talk about and talk about information that lack of information that causes people to suffer needlessly. So, I'll give you the short list. Um, fibromyalgia is a selenium deficiency. It's a deficiency in the trace mineral selenium. Um, they actually, in one of you know medicine's greatest ironic turns, the veterinarian community eliminated fibromyalgia in sheep over 30 years ago. In sheep, it's called white muscle disease. And any farmer will tell you that if their sheep gets white muscle disease, which is fibromyalgia in humans, you call the vet. The vet comes out to the farm, injects the sheep with uh, selenium or the calf, whatever animal has it. And uh, in 15, 20 minutes, the animal's up running around like nothing ever happened to it. It's a simple deficiency in the trace mineral selenium. Restless legs at night in bed. It's a calcium and a magnesium deficiency. Heartburn. We spoke about that on a previous segment. It's a deficiency in calcium and a deficiency in salt. Uh, arthritis, of course. Deficiencies in multiple minerals. Uh, type 2 diabetes. Deficiencies in vanadium and chromium. And about 23 other trace minerals. Uh, high blood pressure. A calcium and a magnesium deficiency. That's an interesting thing to talk about, high blood pressure, because in the circulatory system of the human body, there's really three classifications of vessels. There's arteries that take blood away from the heart, there's veins that carry blood back to the heart, and then there's your lymphatic system. The arteries are the only members or parts of the circulatory system that have muscles in them. And this is one of the distinctions between an artery and a vein. Well, why does... The, why do the arteries have muscles in them? Because as the blood is pumped out of the heart, the muscles in the arteries constrict and relax, constrict and relax to help the heart pump the blood. Pretty smart. So in an optimally uh, working uh, human body, uh, the muscles in the arteries constrict and relax, constrict and relax, constrict and relax, and life is good. But what do the muscles need to constrict and relax? Calcium and magnesium among a number of other players, but calcium and magnesium are two of the major players. So if you don't have enough calcium or magnesium in the body, the muscles will constrict, but they won't relax. Now, any gardener will tell you that if you've got water coming out of a garden hose and you squeeze the hose just a little bit, the water comes out faster because you decrease the diameter of the hose, you increase the pressure. So when the muscles in the arteries constrict but don't relax, your blood pressure goes up. One of the most common causes of high blood pressure is a simple calcium and magnesium deficiency. Uh, and, you know, when you give the body adequate amounts of calcium and magnesium, plus the other cofactors, the other 90 essential nutrients that it needs to get the job done, your blood pressure normalizes. Uh, I mean, it's a remarkable thing. Asthma is related to an essential fatty acid deficiency. Your lungs get all dried out and then they lose their flexibility because there's a deficiency in omega-3 fatty acids. and It's a simple solution. One of the most remarkable cures of asthma, um, I've uh, had the uh, 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 good fortune to witness was there's a very famous um, evangelist um, uh, in the United States. His name is Creflo Dollar. And he has one of these mega churches where, you know, 25,000 people every Sunday show up to it. Creflo's daughter, nine years old, I think, was dying from asthma, which was unresponsive to conventional treatment in a hospital. Her father, Creflo, uh, heard about Dr. Wallach on the radio show, called Dr. Wallach on the radio program, Dr. Wallach, without looking at the girl's chart, without having a private consultation with the girl, without knowing anything other than the diagnosis, advised her what to take, what nutritional supplements to take. And so Creflo had some pull at the hospital because of his fame in the community. And he was able to convince the doctors in the hospital to start his daughter on the medical nutrition. She's dying from asthma, unresponsive to conventional treatment. In seven days, she's released from the hospital 
and in three months the asthma is completely gone because again she didn't have a bad gene she had a bad doctor it was a simple nutrient deficiency which was overlooked by conventional medical minds well that, that's absolutely amazing um, uh, how, how about allergies what, what would what I appreciate one again need, needs all those essentials what is it about allergies yeah it's a good point to ponder right here's an interesting fact to know and tell that most people aren't aware of um, immune system your you're the central headquarters of your immune system is in a network of blood vessels right over your small intestine that's immune system central headquarters is your gut and you know digestion goes like this right it goes from your mouth to your stomach your stomach's job is to digest everything chemically and make it into a liquid and then the liquid leaves the stomach and goes into the small intestine we've got about nine feet of small intestine in the body give or take and it's the job of the small intestine to absorb what we've just eaten into the bloodstream. That's the job of the small intestine. And then everything that's not absorbed gets passed out of the body through the large intestine or the colon. But when food and nutrients, stuff that we just had to drink or just had to eat, absorbs through the small intestine into the bloodstream, it meets the border guard, a.k.a. your immune system. So when food passes from the outside of the body to the inside of the body into your bloodstream through the small intestine, the immune system meets it and gives every molecule a pass or a fail. Now, if you are e eating unwittingly because you've listened to the wrong medical professional tell you what to eat, you've listened to the medical professional that has no training, no experience, no respect, in medical nutrition you've let that guy that girl tell you what to eat that's a that's a bad idea but this is what everybody does so we eat all the wrong foods all the time and the foods just uh, inflame and damage and destroy tissue in the small intestine which creates a situation a physiological condition called leaky gut so now it's kind of like your small intestine is the border between two countries, right? It's like there's a big fence there. And when you eat the wrong foods, it punches holes in the fence so illegal aliens can sneak through the holes in the fence and get into the country. Well, when you eat all of the wrong food unwittingly and uh, damage the intestinal milieu, uh, then big molecules of food are able to slip through the holes in the fence where only little molecules of food should be able to get through. And when you have large molecules of, let's say, carrot or tomato or lettuce or chicken, perfectly good, healthy food, because it's been improperly digested and now it slips through the holes in the small intestinal tract, the immune system recognizes that large molecule as a foreign invader and tries to kill it, mounts an immune response against it, and then the process develops antibodies to it, so now you've developed an allergy to a food. When you have an allergy to a food, every time that you eat that food, your immune system gets stimulated and upregulated. So now, just because you're eating carrots every day and you think that carrots are a healthy food, but you have a food allergy to them and you don't know it, every time that you eat the carrot, you upregulate your immune system now your immune system is hyper-reactive. It's like you are a hair trigger. So you walk down the road of life and you experience some pollen, pine pollen, or a ragweed pollen, or your neighbor's cat walks by your front door and you develop an allergic reaction because your immune system is hyper-reactive. It's like a hair trigger. So there are a great many of us in the holistic medical community who believe that the root cause of all allergies goes back to a leaky gut, which goes back to um, consistent consumption of all the wrong food and a lack of nutrients that the body needs to fix the holes in the gut, right? So it all works together. Now, here's an interesting thing to do if you are a sufferer from allergies. And I have direct personal experience of this because I grew up in Massachusetts in New England on the northeast coast of the United States and I went to medical school in the Pacific Northwest 
Never had an allergy in my life until I moved to Seattle. And when I was in Seattle, I was the poster child for seasonal allergies. Every May and June, I had really intense, bad, you know, seasonal allergies. My eyes, ears, nose, and throat, it was bad, man. And I'm a naturopathic medical student, right? You'd think I would have had an open mind. For four years, classmates and teachers said, you got to clean your diet up. There's a big relationship between diet and allergies, and I told them they were all full of it. And I was wrong, and they were right. Because when I finally got my head out of my rear end and I started looking at what was going on, I had the direct experience that every time I ate certain foods, you know, in the seasons that the pollens were present, within 10 minutes of eating that food, I'd have a full-blown allergic reaction. And it was the food that I ate which capitulated the reaction. It, it wasn't, you know, the pollen and, and the stuff in the, in the air was a factor also, but when I didn't eat those foods, I was okay. And, you know, for August, September, October, November, December, and so on, when I ate those foods, there was no problem. So, if you're suffering from any type of an allergy whatsoever, I don't care what it is, the next time you have, you know, an attack, quote unquote, where your allergic symptoms increase, look to see what the very last thing you put in your mouth was. I don't care if it was a lifesaver or a Tic Tac, it doesn't matter. Look to see what the very last thing you put in your mouth was, and it's probably that was the culprit which capitulated the attack, and so you can test that out, and then you can see, well, son of a gun, and, you know, wait two or three hours and eat that again and see whether or not the same thing happens. And if you're mindful of the relationship between the consumption of food and beverages and the exaggeration of the allergic experience, you can remove those foods from your diet during allergy season or if you know you have allergies all the time you just remove those foods completely from the diet and it will go a long way towards knocking down the pain and suffering that you experience from an allergy while you are attempting to fix it from the inside out with properly applied medical nutrition uh could you talk now about the eyes and what remedies one could uh, use to address you know, the various eye problems from cataracts to macular degeneration and so forth? Fascinating subject. You know, again, my mentor, colleague, and friend, Dr. Wallach, and I, and I have to tell you, Clive, well, I'm, I'm blessed in this life because for the last five years, I, I've had the privilege of mentoring with Dr. Wallach. And in my opinion, Dr. Wallach has forgotten more about pathophysiology than most physicians know. Dr. Wallach's knowledge base is legendary. And years ago, Doc was giving a lecture, 500 people, I think, in Kansas somewhere in the United States. This was when his audio CD, Dead Doctors Don't Lie, was all the rage, right? I think to date it sold 100 million copies. It's a, it's a remarkable lecture on, on uh, medical nutrition. It's a remarkable lecture. If you've never heard of it, um, if, if you're, your listeners haven't heard of it, find it somewhere and listen to it. But in any event, Doc's given his lecture about his experience with medical nutrition and eye problems, right? And there was a physician in the back of the room, an MD, who was an eye specialist. And he stood up and in front of 500 people, he said, Wallach, you're a GD liar. He said, you can't fix these conditions. They're baked into the cake, and once you've got them, you're, you're done. In front of 500 people, the MD and Dr. Wallach made a bet. The MD allowed Dr. Wallach to treat 10 of his patients who were legally blind. And they had everything from glaucoma to macular degeneration, pityriasis rosacea, right? A number of different eye conditions. Legally blind under his care and he allows Dr. Wallach to treat them. Every single one of them regained their sight. Every single one. And that doctor was so apologetic, interestingly enough, I guess there is hope in the world, right? Um, he recorded an audio CD for Dr. Wallach called Seeing is Believing <laughs> about his testimony of the, the, the unseen, the untold, the untold benefits 
of properly applied medical nutrition for eye health. So our basic fundamental idea here is that when the eyes are affected, there are two things that are going on. Number one, there's oxidative damage to certain structures of the eye. Maybe it's oxidative damage to the retina. Maybe it's oxidative damage to the lens. Maybe it's oxidative damage to the circulatory system that feeds the eye. Who knows where it goes and why, but it's oxidative damage. What causes oxidative damage? Free radicals. What causes free radicals? Wheat, barley, rye, and oats, oil in a bottle, fried food, um, food that has uh, preservatives in it, meat that has preservatives in it, well done red meat, the skins of baked potatoes, yams, and sweet potatoes, and drinking carbonated beverages with a meal, plus walking down the street and breathing in carbon monoxide, and there's crap in the air, crap in the food, crap in the water, plus a completely ineffective fire department of the human body because it's nutritionally deficient. So, free radicals, free radicals, free radicals, free radicals, inflammation, 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 inflammation. The circulatory system to the eye gets jammed up. The no more nutrients in or out of the eyes. The pressure builds up in the eye. The macula starts to become occluded because of osteoporosis of the skull. Any number of these conditions or all of these conditions all of which are nutritional in their foundation, are at play all the time. So what do we do? Well, do we need to do thousands of dollars of diagnostic discovery to figure out exactly the mechanism that's um, hurting the eye? No. Do we need to figure out which gene codes for macular degeneration? No, because there is no such gene. What we do is lean on the fundamental holistic foundation belief. The human body knows how to fix itself. The human body wants to fix itself. The human body is trying all of the time to fix itself. So what do we do? Eliminate food that's hurting the eyes and give the body nutritional support that it needs to make the eyes healthy, <laughs> plus lots of antioxidants. And when you do these things, you know, most of the time, there is a point beyond which the body can't fix it. There is a point of no return. You know, I don't know of any therapeutic that's going to grow back a finger that's been cut off, right? There is a point of no return. But I have to tell you, since I've been working with Dr. Wallach, I have no idea where that point is. Because the things I've seen people recover from make my head explode. I didn't think you could recover from that. And son of a gun, they did. And how is that possible? It, it, what is it? Well, it's supporting your body's drive to fix itself. You know how smart the body is? Our body grew itself all by itself from a single-celled organism into us. Now, do you think if it knew how to do that, it knows how to fix itself? Well, every holistic doctor in the world says yes, yes, resoundingly so. But every medical doctor in the world says no, no, no. When you're sick, you're screwed. Your only option is to let the doctor orchestrate a hostile takeover of your biochemistry with man-made synthetic drugs and when those fail surgery that's it they're wrong quite frankly you know how we support and promote eye health is the same way that we support and promote bone and joint health and heart health and liver health and kidney health it's with foundation medical nutrition eliminate the 10 bad foods uh, take the 90 essential nutrients into your body appropriate for body weight and increase your consumption of antioxidants. And in the case of people with chronic inflammatory diseases like macular degeneration, arthritis, congestive heart failure, whatever, the recommendation is 100,000 ORAC points of antioxidants. Antioxidants are measured by their ORAC value. Vitamins are measured by their milligram dose, right, or microgram dose. Antioxidants are measured by their ORAC score, that's O-R-A-C. The recommendation to, you know, support and promote your body's ability to optimize its structure and function in the face of a chronic inflammatory illness is 100,000 ORAC points of antioxidants a day. And just for general all-around health support, the recommendation, a minimum, of 20,000 ORAC points of antioxidants a day. I love helping people with vision problems because it is extremely rewarding, right, when you're successful. 
Well, it, it certainly is. You know, I, I spent uh, 15 years in ophthalmic optics, so I've got a, a huge interest in eyes. And I found that high doses of vitamin C are one of the most effective. Uh, Absolutely, and that's because of its antioxidant activity. Well, quite. I've got some good news for you about actually on regrowing fingers. Um, okay. The Russians have been working on regrowing limbs secretly for over 30 years. Uh, their peptide research has come out uh, over the last few years. And uh, if you go onto YouTube, you can see a video called Regrowing Body Parts. And the second half is Dr. Atala and the work he's doing with uh, using stem cells to remake bladders and kidneys. He's got beating heart valves and, and all sorts. He's print, you, know, you probably know he's print, printing them out, printing human body parts out on an inkjet printer. It's fascinating, right? Now, you know, in Ayurvedic medicine, there's a, um, a regenerative process called Kaya Kalpa. Kaya Kalpa is a very kind of intense procedure, and the yogis are involved with Kaya Kalpa. And when you undergo a Kaya Kalpa regeneration treatment, this has all been documented, you go into a mud hut for 30 days, it's either 30 or 90 days, I can't remember, um, and you're fed a medicinal mixture of herbs and milk and minerals that it's a, you know, a secret Ayurvedic recipe, and you have an attendant with you the entire time, and tissues regenerated, teeth grow back. Hair comes back black. It, bones and ligaments and joints and tendons regenerate themselves, and you look 50 years younger than you did when you went into the treatment. It's remarkable stuff. And why isn't this the stuff that's researched? Well, I'll tell you why. Because the pharmaceutical industry has the majority of people in the world in their death grip, and we've become so culturally conditioned to believe in the myth of the undisputed intelligence of the MD that we just don't question it. We do not question it. I mean, how anybody in their right mind would have chemotherapy is beyond me, right? I mean, chemotherapy, there was a, an article published 12 years ago in the Journal of Clinical Oncology. The, 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 the gold standard of cancer research, and the, the Journal of Clinical Oncology, they did a 12-year study, 12 or 16 years of data. They looked at people all around the world, adults who had developed cancer and were treated with chemotherapy. A gigantic T-score, gigantic research data compilation. And their conclusion, published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology over 12 years ago, chemotherapy for adult onset cancer doesn't work. It doesn't work. And this was published. It fails 97% of the time. So, and yet, it's rolled out every day, all of the time, by physicians without a conscience who have a, a high degree of intellectual cowardice and who are not willing to stand up and take one on the chin and say, you know what, the stuff that we've been rolling out is ineffective, it doesn't work, and there needs to be a different way. Your doctor needs to say that. It's itinerant upon them to say it, but they will not. And this is why, again, ladies and gentlemen, Pick yourselves up, snap out of it, fire your medical doctor now, and educate yourself about the simple steps that you can take right now to optimize your body's ability to support and promote its structure and function. I want to um, rewind you it's on two points. First off, that uh, Ayurvedic uh, cure that you just mentioned, I want that. Uh, yeah, me I, too. Yeah, yeah. Can we get it, please? Yeah, you know, I don't know that we have the the mental fortitude to be able to handle a treatment like that. But it was a fascinating book. It was called. Um, it was an autobiography. Uh, no, it was not an autobiography. It was, it was a biography of a yogi in India who lived for 185 years. And it was documented, and he had the Kaya Kalpa treatment three times in his life. The name of the book is Tapaswiji, T-A-P-A-S-W-I-J-I. T-A-P like Peter, A-S-W-I-J-I. Um, I, I don't know if you can find it on Amazon, but there's a, there's a company in uh, a yoga organization in Canada that does sell it. Their website is babaji.ca, B-A-B-A-J-I. Dot C A. I'd love to do that treatment, but you know, um, I think I have to work up to it. 
The, the, the other thing that uh, I'd like to uh, bring us back to is the peptides, because at the beginning of the, uh, this film on YouTube, uh, 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 Growing Body Parts, it starts off with this guy who cuts his finger off uh, on his model aeroplane propeller. And uh, he not only grew the finger back using peptides, he just sprinkled some powder, peptide powder, on, his, on, the, on the stump, and it grew back. But other people have done that before. I, I was studying this about 15 years ago about regrowing limbs. You, you probably read The Body Electric by uh, Robert Becker. Right. And I got very interested in that. So I, I started uh, uh, looking for people who had successfully regrown fingers. And while I found a few people who had done it, very rare, Nobody had regrown grown a fingernail, but this guy with the Russian peptide regrew the, regrew the fingernail as well. Now there's another video on YouTube um, of this um, ex-army, uh, American army guy, and he, they, because the, the American army is trying to regrow limbs big time, because of course there's so many limbs to be regrown, and uh, there's this one guy who's regrown his thigh. It's not perfect, it doesn't look quite right, but it's usable, he can walk around again. So, um, and there are peptides that the Russians have now let out of the bag for all sorts of conditions to switch your adrenals back on, to do all sorts of things. There were some, you know, for eyes, for right across the board, and more and more are coming out all the time. It's, it's a subject worthy of research. Well, it's a brave new world, and, you know, I mean, it, it, and here's the deal. Uh, this stuff is fascinating, and it's compelling. And a physician with a conscience would want to go there. So why aren't we there? Because the people that are in charge of medicine don't give a crap. And they don't. And they don't deserve our respect. They don't deserve being put up on a pedestal. You know, quite frankly, everybody needs to chart their own moral compass about, you know, how they're going to handle um, other human beings who, you know, are have less than uh, uh, moral values, you know, in their lives. But i got to tell you, that we give way too much social cachet and respect to members of conventional medicine who have completely, utterly, and totally failed us and let us down, except, right, for surgery and trauma care, which is their wheelhouse. And again, thank God for Novocaine and the sterile technique and the mattress suture. But as God is my witness, Clive, we all need to snap out of it, wake up, and, and get a clue, because we're suffering needlessly here, needlessly, just for lack of knowledge. Well, this is absolutely right, and uh, I think what we've got to realize is that we're going to have to give an amnesty to doctors. We're going to have to <laughs> say, look, you, you, obviously you would be in jail for the rest of your lives because of what you've done, and in court for the rest of your lives, trying to compensate all the people who've been poorly treated, but instead we'll offer you an amnesty, and if you want to continue in your profession, you, you, you need to make a few apologies and completely rethink and relearn everything. I, I mean, there's, there's no other way. You know, the, the only problem in the world is that it's run by psychopaths, and you know, there are psychopaths teaching these poor doctors, because I'm sure they had the, the, the best intentions when they first signed up. Well, they do, and it's not like, you know, medical doctors are evil people trying to hurt people. It's not like they're sadists, right? But what they are is completely enrolled in a particular methodology, and then when they see that that methodology fails, they don't have the intellectual fortitude or the courage to step outside of that box because, you know, they'll go to jail, they'll lose their money, they'll lose their house. I mean, they don't want to go there. And, you know, that's a problem. And really, if by some genie-in-the-bottle magic we all woke up tomorrow and there were just as many homeopathic hospitals as there are conventional hospitals, just as many Ayurvedic hospitals as conventional hospitals, just as many traditional acupuncture practitioners are as there are MDs, just as many naturopathic practitioners and herbalists, and everybody was funded by medical insurance and there were equal amounts of research money given to every profession in five years or less the MDs practicing general family medicine would they'd all be out of a job because in a free market people gravitate towards the therapeutics that work but we don't have a free medical market and we don't have a free medical market on purpose because the powers that be know 
that if we did have a free medical market, the pharmaceutical industry would lose the lion's share of business, the MDs would lose the cat bird seat, and it would be an even playing field, and they don't want that to happen. So, what do we do? Well, we lock arms together. You know, we, we provide information. Well, I tell you what works, you tell me what works, we spread the word. And this is what we're up to here with Longevity, is growing a grassroots coalition of the informed people all over the world who are ushered into the undiscovered country of medical nutrition, have wonderful personal experiences, personal health benefits from medical nutrition, properly applied medical nutrition, and then they tell everybody in their life about it. This is the game that we're playing. Where I'm done fighting the pharmaceutical industry, I'm done taking people to court, I'm done trying to get more naturopathic medical schools licensed and regulated and more naturopathic physicians licensed and regulated. I'm done. What I am going to do for the rest of my life is aggressively promote grassroots reform, grassroots reform.